let's, uh, let's see what the love of money will do to us. You ready? First of all, loving money will make you hoard it. You will become a hoarder of money if you love it, especially more than God. Uh, look at James 5, verses 2 and 3. Again, James says this, Your wealth has rotted, moths have eaten your clothes, your gold and your silver are corroded, their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Here's what I've seen, maybe you've seen it too. Some people, when they love money, there's never enough. There's never enough of it. I've seen people's spiritual lives radically change because of this issue. People who are dedicated to church, people who were in ministry, people who are dedicated to the Lord, and now their lives are far from that. Why? Because their passion and their devotion and their love became the blessing instead of the giver of the blessing. I've said it this way, all too often we try to seek God's hand more than his face. And we, when we try to seek his hand and what he can give and what he could do for me, instead of just seeking his face, then we have become more in love with the blessing than the giver of the blessing. Our focus has to be in the right place. Can you say amen? So when you start to love money, you begin to worry that you won't have enough. Jonathan and I were down in Dallas, Texas, and we, uh, we drove in this area. Uh, when was that, son? Two days ago. We drove in this area on our way to a great golf course called Tour 18. And it, it, had, it had some of the nicest houses I've ever seen in my life. I, was, I, I had people behind me getting mad at me because we were just going 10 miles an hour just looking at houses that they probably called the police i just couldn't believe it and and i've been blessed to be able to play golf in some nice areas before and oftentimes they're surrounded by gorgeous houses like this and I, i'll never forget i had a caddy one time at one place that i golfed at <laughs> poor guy and uh and and he he went to me and he said, I will tell you, Phil, that the people that live in these homes, they are just as bad off financially as you are, or you might be. He said, they, they're never happy. They're consumed with trying to get more money. So their debt ratio, they may have a lot of money, but their debt is even higher. And that's what the love of money can do. Again, there's nothing wrong with having a nice house. If God's blessed you with a nice house, that's great. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So I'm not saying that's sinful, okay? But the love of money, the love of the blessing, the love of what he gives us more than the giver of the gift, that's when we fall into problems. On, on the beginning of page, on the top, I should say, of page two on your notes, there's a situation in Luke chapter 12 that I want to read for you. It's printed for you here. Someone in the crowd said to him, being Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbitrator over you? And then he said to them, Beware and be on your guard against every form of greed, for not even when one has an abundance does life consist of its possessions. And he told him this parable, saying, The land of a rich man was very productive. And he began reasoning to himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no place to store my crops? And then he said, This is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns, and I'll build larger ones. And there, I'll, there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you... <laughs> it's, it's Bible. I'll say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years to come. Take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your soul's required of you. And now you will own and, and now who will own what you prepared? 
And so is the man who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. That last phrase is very important. It's the person who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. That's where Jesus makes the distinction. Third paragraph on page two, I underlined this. What's interesting is that you can love money without having a lot of it. Have I already said that? Yes. You can be very much in love with money and still not have much. God wants us to depend on Him and not the blessings that He bestows. So, pastor, this, does this mean we should not prepare for the future? That's not what that means. Not at all. Well, pastor said I should just cash in my retirement and just give it all to the church. I did not say that. Okay. Uh, here's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 14 and 15. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need, so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality. As it is written, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Let me tell you why you are blessed. You are blessed to be a blessing to someone else. What I, what I lost in my mind when I was originally reading the scripture it came back to me. One of the core values of this church is generosity. Generosity. When we are a giving congregation and when we are followers of Jesus who give, we give, we're compassionate, we meet the needs, we bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, God blesses that. There is an incredible joy in being able to meet the needs of those that are hurting. Uh, the, the end of that paragraph puts it like this. Those who have been blessed with a lot have the joy of participating in the work of God to bless other people. What's bad is if you have a person who has accumulated wealth and they will not give. They are not compassionate. Uh, that, that is a very backwards view of the kingdom. That's not how God has created us. My goodness, the natural resting uh, point of your hand is not a closed fist that's hanging on to everything. The natural resting exercise of your hand, if you will, position of your hand is open to freely give and to receive. Let me speak to those of us who maybe don't have a lot. You know what the Lord does? When you're at that point, you get to watch God provide for your needs, sometimes miraculously, sometimes unexpected blessings. 